bookworms, I'm Becca. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my top five favorite books from 2022. My goal for this year was to read six books and I ended up reading somewhere between 12 to 15 books. I feel like some of the books didn't get tracked all the way, which is fine. I need to figure out what I'm going to use next year for tracking, whether it be Goodreads or Storygraph has been talked about a lot. I do have a reading journal, so you would think that it would be up to date is now up to date. I at least doubled my reading goal, so I would say that I had a very good year. It was hard to choose just five books to talk about because I did enjoy just about every book that I read this year, but I did pick out five, so let's get started. Coming in at number five is A Sisterhood of Secret Ambitions by Sheena Bokweg. This is a young adult historical fiction where the premise is behind every important man throughout history, there has been a woman, and behind every woman, there has been the society. So it's kind of like this underground secret society of women throughout the country, and each woman plays a different role throughout history. So there are spinsters, they're trained to fight, they're, they pass secret messages in baking recipes. Like, it's so cool to think about that kind of thing happening in real life. But this particular book focuses on a girl named Elsie who gets dropped off at a home with a few of her friends that she's met through the society. And they are all training to be a wife. So they train to become wives to very powerful men throughout history so that they can kind of pull the strings from behind the scenes. And Elsie actually is getting trained to possibly become the next first lady of the United States. It's really interesting. It seems like... It would be very, like, gendered and stereotypical gender roles, like being the wife and stuff like that. But there were so many ways that this book kind of went against the gender norms. I mean, they kind of are there pulling the strings in events throughout history to make it look like the men are leading, but really it's the women that are taking charge. And so you kind of see Elsie struggle throughout the course of the book. She wants to fall in love and marry this man, but she also sees that her friends are just as deserving, if not more deserving, than she is to become this powerful person in history. And it was a really unique perspective to read from. I loved it. I tabbed the heck out of it. One of the roles in this world, in this society, really stood out to me, and they are the beauty makers. And it says, the beauty makers were men and women and those in between who played with beauty and gender until there were no labels that would stick to them. They were beautiful and handsome in the same breath. Their weapons were the artist brush. We get a lot of like queer representation in this book and trans representation, gender non-conforming, non-binary, all different types of diverse representation went into the story, which I think made it even more interesting. It's set during the 1920s, and so I love to see that sort of representation just being wholeheartedly accepted within the world and not some sort of, like, commentary. They're just casually queer characters within this world, which I loved. Coming in at number four is The Mary Shelley Club by Goldie Moldovsky. And this is a young adult thriller that follows a girl named Rachel, who is the new girl at a prep school and she doesn't really fit in. She gets caught up in this prank and basically ends up being disliked by the entire school, but she also gets the attention of this club known as the Mary Shelley Club. They create elaborate pranks on the student body based off of folklore and urban legends and they call them fear tests, but the fear tests are kind of taking on a life of their own. And when someone starts targeting the club itself, Rachel takes it upon herself to track down the killer, even if that means confronting dark secrets from her past. If you're a fan of horror movies in the slightest, then you will really be able to appreciate this book. It's like a love letter to classic slasher films and I 
adored it so much. It was so good. It kept me guessing until the very end, which was very rare for a book. I feel like I'm the kind of person who can kind of figure out thrillers and mysteries from the beginning, and it makes it a little less fun, so I was really glad to be on the edge of my seat right until the very last page. I hope that there's a sequel for this book right now. It's just a standalone, but I feel like the end might be open enough for there to be a sequel. I haven't really heard a lot of people talk about this book either, so I think that it's kind of underrated, and I just loved it so much. I loved it. Okay, these last three books are so hard to put in order, especially the second and third place books. I just love... I loved all five of these books, but I know what my number one pick is, and I've had a hard time ordering the rest of the books within this list. Okay, I think for number three, I'm going to go with You'd Be Home Now by Kathleen Glasgow. Kathleen Glasgow is an auto by author for me. I will read anything that she puts out. How to Make Friends with the Dark is my favorite book of all time. It's so tragic and beautiful. If you have not read it, please consider picking it up. In this book, we follow a sibling relationship where the older brother is struggling with addiction, but it's from the younger sister's point of view. This book picks up the summer after a car accident occurred with Emery, her older brother Joey, and another girl from school, Candy. Candy ended up dying in the car crash, and Joey was sent to rehab, and Emery is recovering from a knee injury that she received as a result of the car crash. But now that Joey is home from rehab, the whole family is trying to figure out how to adjust to Joey being home. But even more than that, this is the story of a small town that is going through some changes. There is development happening, and it just turns into a really interesting story about like small towns and addiction and how that doesn't just affect the family members, but it can seep into the very roots of the town. And I just found this book so haunting and so beautiful and so important. This is the kind of story that we don't see very often, but I feel like should be read and talked about a lot more, even though it's such a difficult topic to speak on. Kathleen Glasgow has such an incredible way with words when it comes to these taboo topics like how to make friends with the dark deals with the foster care system and grief this one touches on addiction and she just does it in a way that feels so real and you feel so connected to the characters and the community the writing is incredible i highly recommend this book obviously make sure you look up trigger warnings before reading because it is a heavy one and Kathleen Glasgow is not the kind of author to shy away from detail and just diving headfirst into difficult situations so there are some scenes in this book that were incredibly difficult to read but I think overall it was it was very worth it. Okay coming in at number two on my list is Heartstopper Volume 3 by Alice Oseman. I read volumes three and four this year but I think out of all four volumes so far number three is my favorite. I just loved so much about this one. In volume three we follow Nick and Charlie as they go abroad on a class trip and I think it was just fun seeing them in a different environment and because everyone was all together we get more snippets of backstory from the different side characters like Nick and Charlie's friends. We get more backstory for Nick and Charlie of course but also the teachers along on the trip as well which I felt like was the most heartwarming part to get to hear all of these all of these different backstories and just really flesh out these side characters. It was amazing to see, and this was the perfect time to do it because now Nick and Charlie are in the relationship. They're pretty comfortable. They're dealing with real life stuff, but now it's kind of time to really flesh out the world that they're in, and I don't think that Alice Oseman could have done it any better or any differently, and 
I just love these boys and I love these characters and I love this story and I heard that volume 5 is going to be the last one and I'm not ready for it to end but there's going to be a novella coming out this year and I am scared. <laughs> I'm just scared because of how volume 4 left off. I just I want Nick and Charlie to make it. I really do. I really do. But I would also understand if this ends up just being a very cute first love rise and fall kind of story. But I'm not ready. And my favorite book of the year is Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This is way different from any of the other books on the list and way different from any book that I've read for a while, but it is the only book that has stuck with me for the entire year. So, if you're not aware, this is a retelling of the Achilles story, but it focuses on the romance between Achilles and Patrocles, and I loved it. I loved it. Some people criticize it for not being historically accurate, but I don't care. I really don't care. I loved it. This book did break me. It has such a beautiful romance that is full of yearning, and it was so good. I can't even form words to describe this book. The writing was very easy to follow. It was difficult at first, I will say. It was very difficult at first. I thought that I wasn't going to be able to do it, but I pushed through and once you get past like the first chapter or so and kind of get more into the story, it really does flow very nicely. It's not too dense. So I read a lot of like middle grade and young adults. I don't read a lot of literary fiction. I don't read a lot of adult books. So this was intimidating, but I'm glad that I did it. I'm really glad that I did it. Ugh, it's so good. I don't even know what else to say. I don't even know what else to say because all you can do is think about think about the book. I'm just thinking I'm just thinking about Patrocles. Just thinking about him. I loved this story. It was tragic. It was heartbreaking. I didn't really know much about the mythology surrounding Achilles. And so that kind of added to it as well. This was the first time that I was experiencing a story quite like this, and I'm just really glad. And now I just want to read all of the Greek mythology. So leave your favorite Greek mythology retellings or books or whatever down below in the comments because I need more. Thank you. And there you go. Those are my top five favorite books that I read in 2022. Let me know what some of your favorite books from the year are down below in the comments. If you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below to see more videos. I'm going to be doing a video that is highlighting some of my favorite games that I played this year as well, so stay tuned for that. I'm excited for 2023. I'm excited to read more books, play more games, and just make more memories. You know, that's all. That's all I've got for you today, and I will see you next time. Bye!